All right, the guys are gone. Everything's over with, the install's done. We fired it off and everything. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the setup procedure for the gas valve. Train high-end furnaces do not come perfectly tuned. So we're gonna need our dual port manometer. We're going to need a T, need our Allen wrenches and a screwdriver or the trusty six in one. So let's open this thing up and go into setup on the uh, CDA, they call it. And uh, we will see if we can film the whole procedure here. Um, I don't have my other cameras with me, just the phone, so we'll see if I can hold it and, and do everything at the same time. All right, the first thing I like to do is just hook the one side to the incoming, just see what this regulator's doing. So um, we may read that again after we get it set up and running. We may come back and check this incoming pressure just to see how much it's falling off or whatever's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the gas valve back on. We're gonna see just where this level's out at. That's not bad. Um, I think we can do our setup from there. And we'll just watch it to make sure it's not dropping off a whole bunch when the system fires up. But I think we're okay to start from here. So let's turn it off and let's get our manometer hooked up to where we need it for setup. And I'll show you that. All right, so what we've done is we've put our first port tube into the, oops. Our first port tube is in the manifold pressure side of the gas valve. And then our number two port is in the side of the T where we've added this piece this came off the burner box and then we added that piece in that T and hooked it back together. So what our manometer is gonna do is uh, it's gonna give us our um, exactly where we're set up. Uh, net gas pressure is what we will call that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and this is the low, the little black one, um, little black cap back here on the little thing I call it a modulator but I'm not sure what it is uh, I've read it before and there is a correct term for this piece of the gas valve here but as you can see up inside that's that's where we have our adjustment for pressure and that's for the low pressure adjustment. So we're gonna go into setup, uh, into gas valve setup, and it will run uh, low for us first if we select that, and then we're gonna set this um, probably to about one inch. And then we're gonna go, this is our high right here, and then we'll go back into the setup on it and run it in high, which will give us uh, hopefully about 3.5, something like that. Um, 350, 3.50, 3.50, something in that range should be good on high. So let's, uh, let's get a reading on it. Let's go into our CDA and set it up and get it going. All right, before you can go into setup, 
and set these pressures you have to remove the call for heat so we went up and turned the thermostat off and this is your normal screen it'll it'll have the model and the serial number so we're going to just toggle down until we see unit test and then we're going to go to the right and go into gas valve setup and then we want you can see there's min and max so what we want to do is go to minimum first go to yes that we are sure and that should bring us on now of course it'll fire up at the 65 percent that it always fires up at and then you give it a minute it'll modulate down and i think 30 percent is where this goes maybe 25 maybe 30 percent um, so at that point we'll be able to adjust our low pressure gas valve setting and try to get about one inch up. Oh, might have to turn the gas back on. That might help. So it should fire up, and like I said, it'll fire up at 65%, which it always does. And we'll give it a minute. We'll be able to hear the inducer ramp down and. We'll be able to hear it go into minimum, as it says on the CDA, which is going to be our low port. So, hopefully we're going to fire up here in just a minute. And our inducer speed should be on 65% right now for the initial startup. can tell by the sound of the draft motor kind of hard to see the flame with the camera but I can see it pretty good and it's pretty close it's dropping it's a little low so what we want to do our target so to speak here it's going to be about one inch so I'm backing this out very slowly just a little at a time works the opposite of what you would think a regulator works and then as you open it out more you get more gas flow so we're at 97 it went up a bit and went back down so kind of sensitive or cantankerous, whatever you want to call that. So, it's pretty close to one inch. And I think we're going to leave that where it is for the minimum. Oops. Pay attention to the camera, a little hard to read. So maybe cutting this light off would be better. That's pretty close. And as sensitive as this thing is, I sometimes I end up just accepting close enough, but we'll uh, we'll turn it in just a very small amount and See if we can get it dead on our target. It's 
pretty hard to achieve. It's very sensitive. All right, there's 1.02. Right, back up, back down. That is pretty close. So we are probably just going to leave that. It's pretty good. So what we want to do now is go down here and toggle over. And it's going to immediately cut our burner off, which basically just takes us out of the setup altogether. So we're going to have to go back through it again. So we will go down here and until we see unit test, we'll hit enter. Comes up as simple, we're going to go run over and that's gas valve set up. We're going to go from minimum to max. And hit enter, then we're going to go to yes, we are sure and hit enter. And this should put us on max, 100%. And then at that point, we're going to adjust from this cap right here. Comes off. And this is our this is our high or maximum whatever we want to call it. Now keep in mind it's going to fire up at 65% again. This is it. It always fires at 65%. And uh, then we should be able to see it modulate up. Yep. And here it modulates up a lot quicker than it modulated down. All right, here we go modulating up. It's pretty close. The furnace is going to get loud without the door on it, so that air noise is going to be pretty, pretty annoying. Let's see if we can back that out a little bit. Now this one works the opposite of the low. This one, as you turn it that way, it lowers it. So it works more like a regulator, you know, tightening, tightening it in, gets you more pressure. It's pretty close. I don't know that we're going to get it absolutely perfect. Probably just going to go ahead and leave this. I don't think we're ever going to make an adjustment that will see it just jumps and we barely turn it. Good as it gets. So, 
all we do is touch the right toggle and go back to the normal screen. Burner goes off immediately and the fan will ramp down. So let's close this thing up and go back to normal operation. All right, I went back in the house and up in the house, up those stairs over there, and brought the call for heat back just to uh, make sure it fired up. And so it, it fired up and then it modulated down and uh, she's nice and quiet. So I walked up there and I think it was only one degree behind because we've been running a lot of heat doing the setup. So I walked up there and jacked it up about three more degrees. And I just wanted to see if that would modulate it up any or it may take a period of time that we don't want to wait for that to happen, but I just thought I'd watch it a minute. Here it comes. I don't know how much it went up, but I did hear it go up. And I've been sitting on that little stool right there. I found it at home. And I'll tell you what's so neat about it. I ain't crazy about the polka dots, but if you look at this thing, you grab the handle, Look how thin it is. So it'll sit like, you know, behind the shelving bin in the van. So I bought a couple of them. So I could either get black with white polka dots, <coughs> which stood out a lot. Purple with yellow polka dots. And I think they had red with black polka dots or this gray with the white. So. I went ahead and took this. But anyway, when, you're, uh, when your knees are shot from 30 years of this trade and you, you know, you gotta put a, uh, it's just real handy to sit right here, you know. And so outdoor condensers, changing a contactor takes a few minutes. Now, obviously it's not worth it to change a capacitor Maybe if you have to mount it, but I have uh, seriously enjoyed that little $12, and I'm going to call it a tool. That's right. I have enjoyed that little tool. So anyway, I think we got our furnace set up done, and I think we're in good shape. And uh, just thought I'd go through that on video. So that may make it easier than reading the book. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day and I appreciate you watching.